Hi, this is Dan from BPMS Software with a new video that presents the new BPMS import application. The main purpose of the BPMS import application is to load or update master data, such as street names, contact, and property information from corporate customer information systems, CIS, into the BPMS software. And the figure, of course, uh, shows how this is laid out. First, the data extract needs to be set up from each source system. For example, you can set up a customer extract from the water billing system with information such as water service address and customer mailing information. Uh, another extract can be, for example, set up to obtain the latest list of valid street names from your property address system. Secondly, you need to run the extract from each source system into a file that BPMS import application can read. Output files are typically stored in import subfolder under the BPMS backend folder. Third thing to be done is using the BPMS import application, you map each column in the source file to a target column in BPMS table then save the configuration that we call a package in the BPMS import database. These packages are then later executed to load updates into the BPMS administrator. So that action is only done once and later everything is just automatic. So the first thing that you need to do is to determine what information to import and from which system. The table here is the table that shows an example of water service and mailing information from a water billing system. The information will be imported into BPMS in fields that appear on the facilities and customers form. Rows in yellow uh, background indicate identifiers for facility and customer respectively. Uh, the table here shows uh, supported file formats the following formats are supported, which is the uh, DBF, the database file, DBase 3 or newer, then Microsoft Access 2002 or older, Microsoft Access 97 to 2003, Microsoft SQL Server 2005 and newer, and of course the .csv. There are some guidelines for extracting data from your database, and we have that nicely documented in a document that we can send in case you're interested in it. So here, for example, for Microsoft Excel and text file CSV, for any column where there is a chance that some values will be numeric, while others will be alphanumeric, insert the space in front of each value so the system can recognize it properly. For Microsoft Excel files, uh, the sheet name must be the same name as the Excel file name. So you want to actually know those little things before you go about exporting the data. So if you're interested, drop us an email to get all these guidelines as a document. In some cases, special transformations may need to be applied to your data sources before you can import the data into BPMS database. BPMS support can review your data extract to determine if this is really needed. If it is, BPMS software can help by creating a custom Microsoft application for you. So in the example below this table that you can see, the city decided that if a customer had several facilities but all had the same mailing address, then only one customer needed to be created in BPMS. If, on the other hand, a customer had two or more mailing addresses, then a customer would be created for each service address. Looking at these tables here, you can see that the column was added to their extract, which is called Unique Customer ID, which is a combination of a customer number and address ID. Colin was created to help identifying these facilities and customers, that's why. So the first thing that you need to do when you want to import data into BPMS is to create the import folder inside of the BPMS backend folder, in this case, BPMS 6AD. So let's create a folder named import. 
it is important that you name it this way. Now, you need to copy data into it. And I have here a test data set that I'm just going to copy here. And I will use this in this video. I have opened here the BPMS import export uh, application. And you have this application under the BPMS program group in case you purchase the import option for BPMS. So to import your data, you would start by clicking on the import button. You would see this situation and you will click new. And in here, you will first choose the file format. In my example, I copied some XLS files. So here they are. And the package name, I will need to give it a name. I'm going to call this import services and mailing info. So import services and mailing info. Okay, and then I will have to select the import folder. Uh, by default, that's going to be here. But you can use the browse button and eventually choose any other. And I will hit, and before I hit OK, and there is quite a lot to do. So options tab will give you some options as to either allow duplicate keys or whatnot. So just explore this and basically make your decisions. If you need any uh, information, we can provide extra information and the documents that will explain this in depth. So here we go to mappings. Mappings is where all the magic happens for import. In order to import facility and customer information, the destination table for BPMS must be this one, TBL, import, CIS, facility, and mailing info. So you have to use this one. And our source for this particular example is going to be non-residential water services here. As soon as I selected it, I get the transform mappings. And when I click it, BPMS will offer to uh, run auto mapping here. And the auto mapping will happen if the source column and destination column have the same name. And there is a couple of other situations. So for now, I'm going to say no, because I know that my database is different. So here we have the column mapping for the tables. And we have our so source column. Uh, there is a couple of other things I'll explain later. And for now, it's important source and destination column. So you will have to go and open the drop down menu for the source column and start matching left and right side, basically source to destination. Now I know that the account number for this particular mapping is called service ID. So I'm going to find here its service ID. Then, for example, we can find facility street name, which is going to be service address street. So let's find under facilities, uh, facility street name. It's easy to follow because the there is destination table label. And here it shows customers, right? But this is done alphabetically. So here it is, facility street name. And then in here, I will have to find service address street. Service address, address street name. That would be it. So now I'm going to cut this video to quickly map this uh, so you don't have to follow slowly this whole thing. Uh, and then we'll discuss the rest of it later. So here is the mapping example that I started. Now we can see here that I added the primary key check mark at two of these mappings. One is for the uh, table of customers in BPMS and the other is for the table of facilities and in this case it's a customer uh, customer number is primary key for customer in customers table and the same is identifier just below is also uh, put 
and also be, must be mapped to customer ID 2 column, which will be stored in facilities table in BPMS. Uh, this column is used to link a customer to facility. That's why it's done. Uh, the identifier for the service ID in our example must have primary key column checked. So yeah, that's definitely this that I mentioned already. There is another thing that needs to be done. You will notice that these three mappings actually have the check mark at on update populate only if empty. So the checkbox in this column can be used if you only want to populate the field only if there is no value. In our example, we check this box for the street number, street name and unit number on the service address. The reason for doing this is that for large facilities with uh, several addresses, the service address of the water service line is not always the same as the address of the building where the backflow device is located. Checking these boxes will ensure that the facility address won't, won't be changed by the BPMS import application. So now we can hit enter to this and we can see that our first uh, mapping, just one second, I have to hit OK here. And now we see that we have created our first package. Just as a note, uh, when you go about mapping from source to destination, you of course know the names of your source uh, fields, right? But in BPMS, you are not really sure exactly uh, how they are named because the destination column is showing just the actually field name that you don't see displayed this way in BPMS because that's important for the program. That's kind of a string name. So how to learn which ones are which in BPMS? For example, this customer ID too. I will open BPMS here, go to customer table, and if I go and look here under additional info, I see customer ID 2. To verify that, I will right click and I will click on customize, and then I will look here, and it does say that the name of the field is customer ID 2. The same thing you can go and look around here. Let's say customize this field, customer contact name, right? Or if we go to facilities, same thing. We can look at the facility name, which is named facility name, self-explanatory, but not for all the fields it is. Let's see in here, unit number, facility unit, well, still very self-explanatory. So that's pretty much the way, but you still want to know exactly how these fields are of facility street name, right? We had this one here. And the facility street name, I think we did have. Facility street name, right? And in, in the case of original, it's called service address street. So mailings refer to customers and service refers to, to facilities. And that's how you can tell what are the names of these fields in BPMS. Because now you're looking behind the scenes. It can also happen that when you want to import your data that uh, in BPMS you cannot find the appropriate field to put this source information in. So that can be done. For example, I'm going to open facilities and open the custom fields. And let's say that we need to add a field that's named service address and I will use the custom text field. If you right click on it, you can customize this field. You remember we used to look in, in here to see which ways these fields are named in our database. So we're going to use this field and we're going to rename it here. I'm going to call it service address ID and I'm just going to copy so I save myself of typing with control C. Oh, actually, it appeared here automatically as soon as I changed the field. So that's going to be the list label here. This way, we have created a custom field that, that's called service address ID that we can use for mapping later on.
Now that we have created a custom field in facilities form, uh, we can add this to our mapping package. But one thing to remember is, again, if we cust go to customization of this field, we're going to find it in destination uh, column as named as CF underscore FAC underscore text one. It's not going to be this label that we created our self-service address ID. So we have to remember that. Now let's close out of this. Actually, I can minimize or close, doesn't really matter. And so here is my import application that I kept in a background. I hit import. I already started my package. I just want to edit it. And I will go to mappings and click on mappings here and search for the CF FAC text. So, oh, it's here, CF FAC text. And in here, uh, I'm going to, this is a little lower here. I don't know if I can move this, but um, it's the service address ID that we want to put. It's below my, actually, I can move this window up so I can show it to you. It's this field here service address ID all right so now let me move this window down so we can see the whole thing and I can hit OK to this hit OK again if I go and open this again for editing you will see that this is now joined with others okay where is it service address ID right so we can see it in here what can also be done in the ma mapping process is to, instead of mapping from the source column, uh, we can force some certain value to go into destination. So, for example, if we want to make a facility city to be Kitchener, we can uh, make an expression. Now I'm going to have to find here according to alphabetical or order facility city and then in this source column if I right click I can choose expression builder and now I can start building my expression. Uh, I'm going to here enter column name for the expression it's going to be service city. Uh, with the underscore, actually I'll put capital, service city, and the value here I will be putting Kitchener. Now I can validate this expression. And if everything is okay, we'll appear here and show me the sample, how it's going to look like. So now if everything is okay, then I can hit save and close. And this expression will be created. So let me hit okay. Let me hit okay here. And if I go at it again, go to mappings, open my mapping. It's added service city Kitchener as facility city. Uh, users can also build much more complex expressions. So for example, you can easily this way using the expression builder, populate the complete mail address, which basically contains the street unit and other details. To put more information into one line, for example, this address address one field if I right click it's called customer address one you will see that the in import it's called a little differently here just one second it's called customer one customer address one because in BPMS you can have more than one customer right so this will be the first one so that's what we're doing here and using this field for now right clicking here expression builder and I'm going to call this mail. Oops, I'm going to call it mail, mail, underscore address, for example, one like this. 
And now I need to type in the expression here. So here is the finished expression. Finished expression that should put this um, joint data into the address one field in customer table. Once we have all the source and destination columns populated, uh, we need to validate our package by clicking this button here. And it will tell us that the package validation was successful if it was. So then we have created one package. The other thing we want to do is to import the list of valid street names. So um, we're going to add new and file format. We're going to use again Microsoft Excel for the package name. Uh, we're going to use import uh, street names. And the folder, the import folder is import here. Again, all these options need to be set. And then we can get to the mappings where it's now call, now this table is now mapped to the code street name. So in here, we're going to use the street names, XLS. <coughs> So now we can click on mappings and again we're offered to do the automatic mapping which we are not going to do and so let's uh, use now under the street name we need to use street name so street name gonna be street name that's about it what we need to do here and I'm gonna click OK I guess we have to check this as a primary key. That's one thing that I have forgotten to do. Just a second, I'm going to go to mappings. And if I go to primary key, now I say OK here. And if I validate this package, it's validated successfully. So that was just an additional little thing that you want to do to maybe keep the street names up to date with your current billing systems. Now that we have two packages, uh, we need to execute them. So let me first do the streets. I'm going to do execute here. I'm going to go update and add. I don't need to allow duplicate, so I'm going to say execute import. Save changes, yes. So it's going through and adding streets. We can see that it added 15 over 1500 records and we see that there was no errors that's important that we see no errors here so I'll close out of this and then I'll also do the same thing with the import services and mailing info again I work with the blank database so I'll uh, update and add and this will take a little longer time because it will have to go through all these records and it will update one table at a time. Right now we can see that it's working with the table facilities. And it's adding to this table first, a little longer. It will take to then import the customer table. It will happen any minute now. So here it is. Now it's the table customers. Uh, this is, as I say, taking quite a bit of a time, obviously. But I think we're talking about around 1,500 or so records, maybe even more. We'll see once it's mapped, then we'll open BPMS and take a look at this. <clears throat> of course, the speed of converting your data depends on the speed of your computer. And this is the i5 computer I'm working with. The processor is i5, quad core, so should be done fairly quickly. Okay, and it's been done. 
And you know, that's why we waited for quite a while because it added 9,000 records. So it was going, well, almost 10,000 records here. And there were no warning errors. There were no errors. So we're good here. I'm going to close out of all that. And I'm going to open up the BPMS application. Actually, I can close out of this first. Open BPMS. I don't want to run reminders. I'll cancel this. And I'll go to my customers now. Here's one. But if I hit all, it will show all the records that got up here. So that's all these records here. And same thing, I can look up facilities and I can see that all these records and as well the customers are associated with the uh, various facilities here. And as well our streets, if I double click, there is the 15 hundred streets that were actually mapped through this process. So basically all BPMS users that need to do uh, mapping from the billing, billing systems periodically would all do all of this only once, but the only thing that they would periodically really do is go and open up the uh, import application and basically just go and execute uh, those two packages that we created earlier because these packages are you know created once you can certainly if there is any changes in the source data you can always go to any of these packages click edit go to mappings and then eventually change any of the mappings if required so okay that's the basics for mapping uh, data to be PMS and if you're interested in this application, please let us know. We can send you also some uh, documentation in Word, uh, Microsoft Word format for you to study. Okay, Dan from BPMS signing off.